are, are working to promote peace, rights, and well-being for all. And women's empowerment cuts across all of those three dimensions. And today's event marks the launch here in Geneva of the initiative Rising Women, Rising World, a global initiative of women leaders committed to building a world that works for all. And we're privileged to host four of the founding members uh, as part of a very distinguished panel that you will see later today. You have their impressive bios in the handout that has been prepared. And a warm thank you, of course, to the Permanent Mission of Ecuador, to the World Future Council, and to the Interparliamentary Union for partnering with us today. This is also a particular pleasure as for us here at the library. This event will be the first in a series of events that we will host over the coming year, focused on women in politics and peace, looking at the role of women in politics since the League of Nations and until the present day with a great focus on the resources that we have here in the library and our archives. An important mission for us here at the library is to cultivate intellectual in innovation and new ways of thinking. And it's therefore very appropriate that we start today's event with a unique performance by our good friend, Rama Mani, who is Senior Research Associate at University of Oxford Center for International Studies and a counselor of the World Future Council. Rama is one of the four co-founders of uh, Rising Women, Rising World, and she is the dynamo behind today's event. She combines poetry and artistry with her academic and political expertise to address global issues. As we know, women from around the world are redefining leadership and shaping a new paradigm of power to build peace for the present and for future generations. And in the context of our 70th anniversary here at the UN, Rama brings to life just four of these paradigm shifts. Women are pioneering in the midst of violent conflict in different parts of the world. So Rama, the stage is yours. <laughs> I am Vera from Prague. I was born in 1912. I became a stage actress, and I dreamt of performing in all the great theaters of Europe. But in 1939, Hitler invaded my fatherland and tried to exterminate us Jews. We hid for months wherever we could until we got safe passage to cross the oceans, to Ecuador. The people of Ecuador have large hearts and they embraced us. I returned to the stage, but it was all an act. Behind my mask, my grief would not leave me at everything that had been destroyed in Europe. The grief got worse and worse until I left everything and crossed the oceans again just to return to Europe. There I met a German man, a German professor of psychology and Zen philosophy. He was the one who taught me to face my pain, to bury my past, and to find my purpose. I became a professor of psychology, and I returned to Ecuador. And for 50 years, people flocked to me to unlock the dramas of their lives. Peasants from our villages, Poets, philosophers, politicians especially. I have learned one thing in my life. Every darkness contains a point of light. Find it. Your power lies not in controlling others. Your power lies in knowing yourself, your power lies within yourself. I am Rauda from Nablus in Palestine. 
I was born in 1948, but I drank the milk of freedom the moment I was born. At 19, I tried to make my first Molotov cocktail, but I burnt myself instead. After eight years in jail, I met my husband. He had been in jail for 12 years. His body was limp with torture, but his soul still burned with the flame of freedom, and that birthed our love. So we held hands and escaped from place to place with our clandestine posters until the second Intifada. I looked around at the shards of broken lives scattered all around me. And I said, who will accompany these broken lives from grief and suffering to wisdom and strength? I knew I would. That's what I do now. I hold these women and girls in the depth of their despair. Just hold them. Just hold them until they feel their strength so they can stand tall and face the soldiers with dignity so they can respond to violence with words and to humiliation with humanity. Hello, I am Nima. I was born, I think, about 45 years ago in Itombe in Eastern Congo. <laughs> when I got polio at the age of two, everyone told my parents, she is a lost cause, give up on her. But my mother, always had faith in me. She always said, every person is born for a purpose. She has never been to school. She didn't know how to read or write, but she would carry me on her back every day to school. She made sure that I continued my education all the way to university. But when I saw how the women in my country were suffering. I set up Maman Shuja. That means women heroes. We set up a small media center, you know, in the cyber cafe. And we used technology to gather our stories and share them with each other and to circulate them around the world to all our sisters to create a sisterhood of solidarity. Our petition for real peace reached the White House. We said clearly, what we want is real peace, not political peace, where the warlords and the rebels meet with the mediators and they decide which ministry, which ambassadorship they will get. This does not affect us. You see, we women, we are not just here to make a little noise. We are here to shift the paradigm so far, the love of power destroyed our country and justified everything. But we women are showing that the power of love makes the impossible possible. It even makes miracles possible. I am Dima from Darra in Syria. This is where our peaceful revolution started. This is where they started bombing us with barrel bombs. I remember the first day they threw barrel bombs on us. I was walking in a narrow street when I heard the screaming, get down, get down. I saw every single bomb falling. I saw it destroying everything. 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 
Each bomb is like an earthquake of 7.6 on the Richter scale. 55 bombs every day for three years. But we people didn't sit still when we were being bombed by our own government. We all organized ourselves. We set up the civil defense units to go into the bomb sites and save civilians. We set up field hospitals to help those who'd been injured. We set up civic organizations for our children and old people. So many civic organizations every day. But we don't work separately. We all work together because we know everything is interconnected because we are united to protect each other and to win our freedom. Thank you.